All right, welcome in everyone. If you have a question, go ahead and raise your hand. Go ahead, Chase. Hey, Scott, you guys clinched a spot in the play-in tournament tonight. Um, after all that you went through this season, uh, the COVID outbreak, the injuries, 15 games under 500, just what does it mean to, to get to this point, this accomplishment? It's a, it's a great feeling for, for everybody involved, our entire organization. We just we chipped away and we were down. If, if, took a bunch of punches, but we just kept standing back up and fighting for one another, and it put us in this position. And Brad and Russell led us and continue to instill that fighting spirit. No matter what, no matter what happens to you, you still got to go out and compete. And there's then trust me, there was times where it was. You know, when we came back four or five games and it was, you know, it was hard, but we, we fought and we battled and we didn't get, let it get, get us down where we, where we couldn't uh, celebrate the little steps that we were going to work on to, to make, but it was a great win. We're not, we're not satisfied. We, we still got one more game to go. You know, we're disappointed that we didn't get a game or two on that last um in Atlanta, but we bounce back and it's always hard when you're on a long road trip uh, to come back that first game. And it's, uh, but I tell you what, our guys gutted it out and, and played Rollo. Rollo did a great job coming in. Cause we, when we got the lead, we were bleeding a little bit and they made a little run, but his, his hook shot was, was what the, what the doc, doctor ordered during, during that stretch. But a lot of guys played well. And um, along the way, you know, I'm sure there were times where you, you guys felt like you couldn't point to certain things as excuses uh, or make excuses. Um, how, how tough were kind of the lowest moments of this season when you guys couldn't really convey it um, to the media? Well, I'm a pretty optimistic guy. I believe in just doing things the right way and you get rewarded. And, and that was, that was the hardest part because we we did everything the right way and did not get rewarded. And we got, we got hit pretty hard. Like I said, many times, the hardest thing, you know, is to not see your players for 10 straight days, basically, and then come back and practice for just seven or eight guys and then go on a, on a tough three game trip and then have this seven of the, you know, the, I think seven, I think it was seven guys coming back like three weeks later for their first game. We knew, I knew that there was going to be some, some lingering effects to that. I didn't know exactly what it is. I, you know, you read about all the things that people go through when they do get that, when they do get COVID. And, but like I said, I give our guys a lot of credit because it's, it's, I've been a lot, I've been in the league a long time. And when you're 15 games under 500, you're, you're doing the, okay, where, where are we going uh, for vacation? Uh, but we we hung in there and fought back and stuck together and teams you know this is adversity helps adversity helps even those last two losses those are playoff losses and we came back and bounced back and and we won tonight but i'm proud of our guys the all season the way they stepped up and never ever not one time they made an excuse and i didn't think they would either red Hey, Scott, um, you played a lineup tonight with Russell, three power forwards, and Rob. Where did you pull that one out of? That's, I mean, I've been doing that all year. We've just been, I've been, been thinking out of the, the box uh, all year, playing three centers, playing three point guards. You just do what you have, and you don't make an excuse, and you figure out ways to stay competitive. And then if you do that enough and you get some confidence – and then you can grow and add and and kind of move things around and and make it difficult for teams. We got, let's face it, we got really, we got two really high level players, both all NBA players, and then we got really a lot of good role players that understand what they do. And we got a couple of, you know, we got some young players that are getting better and they're pretty consistent for being young players. And, but tonight's lineup, I there was both teams had some lineups out there that was. Um, interesting at times 
And uh, you know, I'm sure I'm sure you would love to get up to eighth if you could, because you get in the double elimination scenario. But if you guys go into Sunday in a scenario where it's only ninth or tenth, how do you prioritize uh, home court in a play-in versus maybe getting some extra rest going into that scenario for your? Yeah, day? I mean, I don't I don't think we're worried about the extra rest. Um, this time of the year, I mean. I, I think it's kind of I don't know if the right word is it's it doesn't make a lot of sense. What's a day or two extra? We've been battling and scrambling and, and fighting and clawing and and we're tired. I know I'm sure at times our players are tired. I'm sure the whole league is tired. The whole you know, we're all tired. You know, it's 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 the hardest year of probably all of our lives, just the, all the things that we had to go through and the COVID testing, the late, you know, we're going to have a, a late one tomorrow night. And then we got another one next morning early. So it's, um, we want to just play good basketball. You know, we hope that, you know, Brad keeps improving. Don't know what that means. I haven't even talked to the guys after his evaluation tonight. Um, but he has, there's another, what, 36 hours before, we have to make a decision there, but if he's ready, great. If he's not, we move on to the next game, uh, Tuesday night, no matter where it's at, we got to show up and compete and give ourselves a chance to win. You do that by playing, by playing hard and playing for your teammates. You do that, you get a chance, uh, no matter who you have on the floor. I know there's times that we didn't do it as well as I would have liked, but we've been on a nice stretch of really competing. Hey, but Kind of along those same lines, I understand that at a certain point you don't have much of a choice, but with a guy like Anthony Gill, what makes you trust that he's going to, you know, you can kind of stick him in in any situation and he's going to play um, like he does. He seems to play with a ton of poise. Yeah, you know, I give Tommy Tommy Shepard all the credit. He's been telling me about that young man for uh, last year and for two years, for two years. And he just said, man, this guy will fit us. He's, he's like the perfect culture guy. He works hard. Great guy. Will always be ready and, and a really good player that, you know, he's, he's obviously had great experience in college and then plays at high level in, in, in overseas. But I'll be honest, I even that's funny. I even talked to him a couple of days ago. I said, man, when the first month, I thought I was better than you. And there was, there was times that he struggled. Uh, but I tell you what, he he just kept playing, and and then then it starts growing on you, and then you just see it every day, and it's not, it's not like he's, it's not fake. And that guy is cheering his teammates on. He's in every huddle. He locks into every play and every timeout just in case that I might make a sub after the huddle breaks. And then he started playing better in practice, and then then he threw him in the game, and then he, you know, the, unfortunately we lost that that game in Toronto where he took the huge charge and he missed a couple of shots, but that gave me more confidence and the team confidence. He, you know what he is? He's a winning basketball player that does a lot of winning things that don't really show up in the stat sheet, but you need in your locker room and you need on your bench and you need in your huddle and you need on the court. Like tonight, I thought his minutes were a big part of our win, but I'm I'm happy for him. Happy for him. Um, His family, newborn he just it's a, he's a great he's a great representative for our team and and he he's 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 an nba player and and tommy i mean tommy tommy nailed it i mean he really nailed it i can't say enough good things about him and um what made you want to put chandler in the starting lineup i think we needed some size you know they they we tried to throw some size at at um at sexton uh he's he's tough strong I mean, he has a good name. Is it Young Bull? I mean, that guy, he gets in there and battles and competes, and they got they got a good one, and we wanted to put some size on him and try to frustrate him a little bit. Thought we did a pretty good job. Uh, but yeah, they 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 made they made some threes and that kept them kept them hanging around. But we we pulled away with some good defensive stops in that third quarter. It's kind of like almost mirrored the same game at their place. It was a close halftime in the third quarter. We pulled away. Alex. 
Hey, Scott, um, you know, you talked about the emotions and what it means to make the play, and especially after all the adversity. What was it like in the locker room? What were the players saying in there? How was how was the feeling, and, and how would you describe that? It was great. It was great. I mean, they threw a bunch of water on, on Russell again, and because the last time it was a tie, now this time they, they break him. I just I thought I just said, hey, we can't we can't be keep drenching Russell every time he breaks his own record. That's going to come. I mean, we're going to have mold issues in our locker room with the carpet. But it was exciting. It was an exciting moment for us. I mean, I don't think I don't even think we talked about much about the play in, and then. But it was a good it was a good moment for for after the game, Ariel. Uh, she handles a lot of our digital and she will be leaving and we kind of gave her a couple of things and guys were happy for her, but it was, a, it was a good moment through a lot of, a lot of tough things that we had to go through this year. And COVID wasn't, COVID's no fun testing one hour, once a day. And then they gave us a little bit of a break the last month. You got two hours, twice a day to get out from your room on the road, all those things just add up and it wears you down. And, but it's well worth it by us staying together and fighting for one another and getting an opportunity to play in the postseason. And a follow up real quick. Where do you kind of see your guys, you guys as a threat in the East, you know, if, if you make it through the plane, if you get into a series, whoever the nets or whoever else you might end up Sixers, whoever it is, you know, if feels coming in healthy, where, where do you see your guys as ceiling heading into the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to jump too far ahead. We're just going to focus on just enjoy a day off tomorrow and get some treatments and get your body and mind right and focus on Charlotte um, Sunday. And then and after that, we got to focus on wherever wherever we are and whoever we play, and, and we'll worry about that. We know we can compete against any team in this league, um, but it's going to be – it's going to be, you know, obviously it's tougher without having Brad. Hopefully Brad is out soon or back in the lineup soon. Um, because we obviously know that that we're a much better team when we're we're he healthy and and Brad's a all NBA player and we, he's been missed the last three games. But it was nice for us to get a get an opportunity to win tonight at home and put ourselves in the position to play after the season's over. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, Ben. Hey, Coach, uh, I guess you just said you don't want to look too far ahead, but just generally speaking, what's your philosophy in terms of shortening rotations in the playoffs? And do you expect that to kind of to apply that in the play-in situation? Yeah, I mean, that's there's probably going to be some tightening up or if, if, if guys maybe not playing as many minutes. Um, but that's that's going to be, you know, a feel thing, a health thing foul trouble thing, matchup. There's all kinds of things that you have to think about, and our staff will be thinking about all those things. You know, we love to get everybody back and ready to play and healthy. But like I said, uh, how and Brad are important to what we do. They're tough. They're shot makers. Uh, they're gamers. And, you know, Brad is potentially could be the leading scorer in the league or top two for sure. Um, but I just we just focus on just we're going to focus on Charlotte first before we start thinking about anything else. I'm just glad that we're in this position because we stayed together and I couldn't be more happy, happier for the guys. And because it's um, they've been through a lot like we all have. Last question to Karita. Hey, Coach, you talked about the season, obviously, and how it went. But when you look back, what would you say was the turning point that got you all back on track and able to be in this position? Um, I think the mental, the mental toughness of the group. I mean, you're by – I mean, you're, you're a lot of times – you nothing was normal for any of the players or probably you guys feel the same way. Got your family. And we've had, you know, we've had our family and we also have our basketball family. So we kind of had a little bit of a break there. Um, but I think the turning point was that we we never used it as an excuse. And I'm always, you know, I'm always um, all I have eyes and ears on, on the group and try to get the pulse of the group. And 
the sense anything was ever changing from that area. I don't believe in making excuses. I believe in just doing what you need to do and take care of business the best that you can. And whatever's thrown at you, that's just another opportunity to embrace it and challenge yourself to overcome it and, and enjoy the, the competition of, of having things thrown against you. And I thought we, we did that throughout this season. Like I said, there's a lot of lonely times because of all this you know usually you're i've been in the league for 30 years you got certain places when you're on the road visit family i've been in i think i've been in half the team so i have friends that were once ball boys that are like brothers to me and i don't you don't get to see those and then families on our team they've had families in just about every city you don't get to see that but we stuck together and like i said i couldn't be more proud of the group All right. Thanks, coach. All right. Appreciate it, guys.